give God praise, Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we love you. God, you're the risen Savior. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Come on, stay standing. Father, thank you for moments like this where we can meet with you. So, Lord, we thank you that you are the Lord of the church and that you're moving among us today. Father, we give you permission to do what you want to do in our hearts, Lord. Come and settle down among us. God, thank you for your presence that's here right now. Lord, we don't want to rush this moment. We just want to stand strong in you and peace in you. You are everything. Lord, we love you. We give you this day celebrating you, our risen Savior, in Jesus' name. And everyone who agreed said, amen. Come on, one more time. Let's celebrate God. Lord, we love you. Lord, we exalt you. Well, you can be seated today. Welcome. Hey, around here, we like to say that we are one house with many rooms. And so that means there's a whole bunch of us worshiping Jesus in a whole bunch of different places across Southwest Florida and beyond. And so uh, we just want to welcome in uh, all of our locations, our Cape Coral location, our, our East location on Gateway Boulevard. Welcome to you, family. We're so thankful you're here. Anyone in Overflow, welcome to you. It's Easter, man. We're just so thankful that you're here worshiping with us, our online family uh, as well. And friends uh, and family, other churches across uh, the world, welcome to you. Uh, we see you. We're so thankful for you. Hey, it's crazy because uh, you hear us talking about how this is uh, our 20th year of ministry here in Southwest Florida. And uh, you heard us speak about that a couple minutes ago and it got me reflecting. And so uh, do you guys want to see what our Easter celebration was like 20 years ago? Uh, okay, check this out. We have a picture. So this is us uh, in our living room. There it is. And uh, that's me with the guitar, the young one used to, with the baby face. That's me. If you're wondering, well, where's Pastor Sarah? Somebody had to take the picture, okay? There's six of us. And so uh, that, is, that is us. And so uh, we had two little ones. Ours, was, or Will, was uh, just 20 months. And then the other couple in the picture there, they had a, a two-year-old as well. And so uh, the Easter service lasted as long as their nap time. No, come on, parents. You know what I'm talking about. As soon as they woke up, it's like, all right, let's go. So we went to CeCe's Pizza on Easter Sunday because we didn't know anybody here. What's up? CeCe's Pizza on Del Prado Boulevard. What's up? I love it. I love it. Well, hey, uh, today we're going to talk about the fact that we have access through Jesus. We have access through Jesus. And uh, let me ask you a question. Um, anybody like to cruise? Show of hands. Come on. Every location. Uh, Sarah and I love to cruise. Um, and we've been actually cruising since our honeymoon. You want to see that picture? All right, here you go. This is us cruising on our honeymoon. What's up? Look at little Matt and Sarah. Unbelievable. If you're wondering, yes, that's my wife's prom dress. Because uh, we were young. I was 21. I look scared to death, don't I? She's 19. Unbelievable. And, uh, and, you know, the thing about cruising is that we've discovered over the years as we continue to cruise is that, like, the, the more you cruise, the more access levels you get. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, so, so we were on a cruise a few years ago, and we were up in one of, the, one of the, the buffets for breakfast. And my wife on the cruise loves these bran muffins something, and I'm like, I don't know why you like bran muffins, like, because bran doesn't rhyme with sugar, so I, I'm out. Like, I don't care. And so, anyway, she, she asked one of the waiters, she said, hey, do you have any of those bran muffins? And he kind of looked around the buffet for a second, you know, and he's like, no, I'm sorry. Well, like, no lie, like 30 seconds later, we're still filling our plates, plural, at this buffet, <laughs> And all of a sudden, this old lady walks up to the same waiter, and she said, do you have any of those bran muffins? And he looked back at her, and he said, no, I'm sorry, we don't. And then he looked down, and she had like a lapel pin that means you've cruised like 50 million times. And he goes, wait. And my man took off, and somewhere on that Royal Caribbean ship, my man came back about six minutes later with three bran muffins. And I looked at my wife, and I go, how do we get that? I want a pin like that. Well, apparently you got to get old, like in cruise like a hundred million times to get one of the little pins so you get the brand muffins. Access. Okay, and if you're wondering what that whole story is about, well, guess what? It's Easter. And thanks to Jesus, we have access. Amen. 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 And that's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're going to talk about for a few minutes today. So, Father, one more time, we just pause in this moment and we just invite your presence to speak. Lord, our answer is yes. Lord, our hearts are open. Would you speak to us? God, I get out of the way so that you can get in the way. Lord, would you move upon us today? In Jesus' name, and everyone who agreed said, 
Amen. You know, when so many of us think about Easter, we, we, you know, it's so easy to think in our culture today, you know, we think about bunnies or we think about, you know, chocolate, like lots of chocolate, like Norman love chocolate. What's up? Right? Like, or, or maybe ladies, you think about, you know, an Easter dress or something like that. Or guys, you're like, oh, Easter, what's Easter? Oh, Easter. That's the one, you know, here in Florida, fellow, that's the one holiday a year I tuck in my shirt. Right? It's, oh, it's Easter and I tuck in my shirt. Can't you tell? It's a holiday. Like, this is a special occasion, Right? But here's, here's the thing, and, and I know so many of us know this, but maybe you're new to the whole God thing and the whole church thing. Easter's about so much more than that. Yeah. Easter, according to the Bible, is about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, which then begs the question, well, why, why honestly, like, why does that matter? Like, why is that so important? And here's what you have to understand. In order to understand the magnitude of what Easter is that we're celebrating today, you have to go back to the beginning of time. To, to really the Garden of Eden with, with, uh, with Adam and Eve. And when Adam and Eve sinned, when they, when they fell, sin and imperfection entered the human race. And for, for the remainder of time, we as mankind have been trying to figure out a way to get back into relationship with God. And so in, in the Old Testament of the Bible, they, they, were, they, they came up with a whole bunch of rules and, and regulations. We would call those religion and then all these, all, these, all these stipulations and don'ts and do's and all of this, this kind of this works mentality, which honestly is absolutely exhausting. But then Jesus came. Come on, I'll say it again. Then Jesus came. And he lived for 33 years a perfect, sinless life. He, he did three years of, of public ministry to prove that he was the Messiah, the, the Savior of, of the world. And he, he lived a, a perfect, sinless life. And then he was, was wrongly accused and arrested. And he eventually died on a cross, not for his own sin, but for your and my sin, for the sin of, of all mankind. An Old Testament prophet named Isaiah, he, he kind of sums it up perfectly. Look what he said. He said in Isaiah 53, 5, but he, speaking of the Messiah, the, the Savior, Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. So he took our punishment and gave us peace, and by his wounds we're healed. What are we celebrating today that when Jesus died on the cross for the sin of mankind, think of this church, he fulfilled over 300 Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah that no other person in history could even come close to that. He, he was no ordinary human. He was God in the flesh and he was the savior of the world. And in Old Testament times, they, to, to symbolize that, to, to demonstrate that, they, they created what was called the temple. And the temple was the place where literally the, the actual presence of God dwelled. It was called the Holy of Holies or the most holy place. And inside the temple, in Old Testament pre-Jesus, the actual presence of God dwelled in this one room, the Holy of Holies, or the most holy place. And here's the deal. People like you and I, we weren't allowed in there. Common folk like us, we couldn't get in. Us sinners couldn't. In fact, only one person, one time a year, was allowed in the Holy of Holies. It was a priest, and, and his whole job, his whole responsibility, was to go into the Holy of Holies to atone and, and make a sacrifice for the sin of all mankind. And every year, you had to keep paying the price and keep sa that sacrifice going. But you and I, average, sinful, broken, flawed humans... We didn't have a chance. And see, in the temple, there was, there was this, this separation. It was actually this giant veil, this giant curtain that separated the, the holy of holies, the most holy place where the presence of God was from the rest of the world because God wanted everyone to know imperfection cannot dwell with perfection. Unclean can't dwell with clean. Unholy can't dwell with holy. And so there was this giant curtain, okay? So this curtain that separated the holy of holies from the rest of reality in the world was, listen to this, it was 60 feet high. Okay, so like east location right now, everybody look at the ceiling. Okay, that's about 27 feet up. Cape Coral location, look at your ceiling. At the peak, that's about 30 feet up. Fort Myers location, if you're sitting in this room, look up. That's about 22, 23 feet high. 
So double that, a curtain, and it was 60 feet high and four inches thick. That's the width of a two before. That's a big curtain. Wow. That's a big way of saying, stay out. Holy God can't relate to you and I. But Jesus. Okay. So there's, there's four books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that are known as the Gospels. And those are, they tell the story, the collection of stories about Jesus' life and ministry here on earth, his life and his death. And in three of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which we're going to look at here in just a second, it actually paints a picture when Jesus is on the cross, when he, at the moment that he dies, there's this little bitty detail that honestly, for, for a long time, I didn't even catch. I've been preaching for years, and, and it took me some time before I even caught the magnitude, the massive implications of this detail at the moment when Jesus died on the cross. Check this out. Matthew 27. Here's the first one. Look at what this verse says, verses 50 and 51. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he he gave up his spirit. In other words, he breathed his last. He died. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Come on, somebody. From top to bottom. Torn in two. 60 feet high, four inches thick. Look at Mark chapter 15. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Next sentence, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Luke records it as well, chapter 23. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. So for three hours, there's complete darkness, for the sun stopped shining. And look, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Hey, church family, I got good news for you this Easter. Guess what? When Jesus died on the cross, that giant dividing line between God and man, that curtain, that veil in the temple was torn, not from bottom to top like man could do it. No, no, no. From top to bottom, baby. God tore it open. And he said, now you fallen, sinful, broken humans have access to me. That's what Easter's about. Church, when the, when the curtain was torn, everything changed. Because now we common people, we sinful people, can have access to God. There's no longer separation between God and mankind. Hebrews 10 verses 19 and 20 kind of sum it all up. Look at this. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have, what's the word? Confidence. That's what we can have because the curtain's been torn. We have confidence, look, to enter the most holy place, the place where the presence of God is. How do we enter? Look, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. He is not dead. He's alive. Open for us. Look, here it is. Through the curtain. That's what Jesus did. That is his body. When Jesus' body was broken, it gave us access. So for the rest of our time today, here's what I want to do. I just want to talk to us about three things that we have access to now because of what Jesus did for us on the cross when he rose from the grave. Maybe you want to write these down. Here's the first one. Number one, we have access to heaven. What does this mean? What are the implications now of the curtain being torn from the top to the bottom of God, tearing it open with the body of Jesus? It means we have access to heaven. The Bible makes it clear that because of what Jesus did on the cross, we have access to being able to spend eternity with God when we die. I love this verse, 2 Peter chapter 3, it says this in verse 13, but according to his promise, speaking of the promise of Jesus, we're waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Peter's writing to his readers and to us, and he says, I know sometimes you can look around the world and it feels disheartening. I know it can be discouraging to watch the news right now. I know how hard it can be living in this imperfect, fallen, broken, sinful world. And Peter writes and he says, but listen, don't forget the promise of Jesus that this life is not all there is. Because of Jesus, we have access and confidence to know 
that when we die, when our time on this earth is done, we can spend, we will spend eternity with God in heaven. We have access to heaven. And can I just tell you this? It's a free gift. We don't have to earn it. Ephesians 2 says it this way, verses 8 and 9, for it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. And this, not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works. Why? So that you and I can't brag about it. God set the whole thing up, and he's like, hey, no, no, no. I don't want you being like, oh, look how awesome I am. No. Your testimony needs to be, my goodness, look how much of a sinner I am. But the grace of God saved me and gave me access to the kingdom of God. It gave me access to heaven. <laughs> Last week, we were invited uh, to one of our staff members to their home for dinner. And so we put it on the calendar and got the schedule for last week. And um, so we were, we were about to go over to their house. And a few minutes before we, we went over to their house, uh, we got a, a text from, from the, the guy. And he said, hey, we're super excited. And he told us about the menu and everything, which got us really excited. Uh, and then he said, hey, here's the, the gate code because we live in a gated community. So here's the gate code you're going to need to get in the gate to get to our house. And, you know, it's interesting here in Florida, having lived here for 20 years, moving from Indiana, like, we love our gated communities, don't we? And I get, we live in one. Like, it's cool. But, like, in Indiana, the only reason you have a gate is to keep the cows in. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? We put the people in there, and then we set the gate. Is it just me? Who are we keeping out? Right? Like, Uber Eats? Like, I don't know, but it sure does take a while to get my food. Open the gate. So, anyway, so he sends us the gate code. Why? Because in order to get in the gate to have access, you got to have the code. No code, no access. And thank God my buddy didn't text me and be like, hey, man, if you Venmo me like 20 bucks, I'll give you the code. Because <laughs> honestly, I don't know what I'd have done. I'm like, man, I love you, but I'm not paying you 20 bucks to get in. It's a free gift. And can I tell you, the code to the gate of heaven is not W-O-R-K-S, works. It's J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. It is the grace of God that gives us access to heaven. Here's the second thing we have access to. We have access to his presence and his power. According to scripture, because of what Jesus did, because the curtain was torn, we now have access to the presence of God in his power. See, God no longer dwells in a temple he no longer dwells in a building like in the Old Testament. No, 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 no. The Bible says that when you and I receive him, that he puts his Holy Spirit in us. Think of this. The God of the universe dwells in us. And church, listen, I get it. It's so easy in our world to feel so hopeless, to feel so powerless, to feel helpless. I, I, I think it's possible that there are some, and you've, come in this Easter, or you're participating online, and that's how you feel. You're like, Pastor Matt, you have no idea what the last couple of years has been like. You have no idea how hard my life has been. Some of you are questioning God. God, do you even exist? And if you do, do you even love me? Do you even care? Some of you are asking, why am I here? Not here, like here on earth. Can I just tell you, we have a God who loves us so much. Look what Romans 5, 5 says. God's love has been poured out into our hearts, not in some building, into our hearts. Look, through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. When we open our heart to Jesus Christ, guess what? He puts his Holy Spirit in us. That means that we can know his presence. We can know his love. We can know his hope. We can, we can experience his life. And I just believe that some of you have come in and you're so dry. You're so weary. You're so broken and broken down. And I just believe God's going to touch you today. God wants to make himself and his love real to you. We have access to his presence. And then here's the great part. Once we start to realize that God's spirit lives in us, the Bible makes it clear that 
that he puts his power in us. And that his power working in us gives us the ability to live how he wants us to live. Look a few chapters later in the same book, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, it says this, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And if, if we said yes to a relationship with Jesus, then that means we have God's Spirit living in us. So here's what that means. That means there's hope. That means we don't have to wander around trying our hardest, trying our best. That means God's Spirit inside of us empowers us to live how God wants us to live. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, by his divine power, God's given us everything. Everyone say everything. Everything for living a godly life. And we've received all of this by coming to know him. Church, that means that in Christ Jesus, we have the power to live how God wants us to live. So good news. The lies you've been living under that keep rolling around in your head, guess what? God wants to set you free. The fears that have been holding you back and gripping your heart, God wants to set you free. The addiction that you can't seem to break free from, good news. God, through his power, can set you free. That relationship that is broken and seems broken beyond repair, guess what? God can heal that relationship. His divine power has given us everything. We need it. I get it. Maybe right now you're listening and, and the devil's just screaming lies at you going, you don't have what it takes and you don't know how to make it stop. Can I tell you the way to make it stop is to say, Holy Spirit, speak truth. We have access to his presence, his power. Here's the last one. Now that the curtain has been torn, what do we as God's family have access to? Just that. We have access to the family of God. We have access to the family of God. The Bible makes it so clear that when you and I say yes to a relationship with Jesus, guess what? He, he doesn't leave us out there all by ourselves wandering around trying to figure this life out solo. He places us in a family of God. That means, good news, you got brothers and sisters that you're going to take the journey with in the highs and in the lows. You hear us all the time talk around here, if you keep coming around, that we have a culture of next steps. That means we just believe everybody has a next step in their relationship with God. So whether you've been walking with Jesus for a long time or a short time or not at all, guess what? You have a step to take. So you know what your next step is, every one of us? Come back next week. That's your next step. For real, I don't think this is an accident. I don't think this is just a one-time deal. I think God brought you here to plant you in a family like this. Why? So that you can just keep coming back and keep getting around people and keep getting in the presence of God. And in three weeks, come on, somebody. We're going to the arena. Yeah. All of us as the family of God get to celebrate together. So can I just encourage you? Make sure you're at the arena. Sisters, make sure you get there on Friday night and Saturday for the beautiful conference. Make sure you're joining us in the arena because I believe this weekend is going to be a monumental week. Not just in the life of our church, but in the life of each one of us. I believe that. I believe that as we, as we reflect on God's faithfulness on the first 20 years of our church and then begin to pivot and turn and embrace all that God wants to do in the next 20 years, that something significant is going to happen in us, in the next generation. Make sure your sons and daughters, your kids are there. Come on, that's the family of God being together. I love this verse, one of my favorite verses in all the scripture. Psalm 68, verse 6, it says this. God sets the lonely in families. And, and yes, there's biological families that all of us have. And some of us had better experience with all of that than others but we have we have a spiritual family the family of God that, that God sets his people in and I just look across our church and we've been doing a lot of reflecting over these months leading up to our 20 year celebration and I love looking across our church and I think about a young adult guy who over the last couple years, God has allowed him to break free from alcohol and drug addiction. 
And he now knows the love of a family because he's here. He's in a group with friends. He serves. I think about a couple in their 50s who relocated here a year or two ago and got planted in this house. And now they're finding their purpose. They're, they're serving. They're, they're, they're in community with other brothers and sisters. God placed them in the family of God. I think about a teenager who, who has struggled with, with wondering if they belonged. And today, they serve every month in our Serve Your City projects. And they're helping now others find the same hope, the same family that they have found here in the family of God. I'm so thankful to be a part of the family of God with all of you. Sarah and I, every day, thank God. For you, that we have the opportunity to do this together. One more verse, Galatians chapter 4, I love this. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you're his child, look at this promise. God made you an heir. You know what that means, church? That means that this Easter we have access to God the Father, to the family of God. And there's an inheritance attached to that. <sighs> Church family, can I just tell you this Easter what we're celebrating? We're celebrating the access we have. Not because of some pin on a cruise ship that gets you free muffins. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have something way better than that. So here's what I want to do. I want to pray for us before we move on with our time together. So in every room, can we just bow our heads? Because I believe it's possible that for some of us listening today, you, you don't have that access. You don't know Jesus personally. And I believe it's not a mistake that you're here, that you're participating online. I believe it's not a mistake that you're here right now listening to me, sitting in one of our rooms, I believe God brought you here so you could hear this message of love, God's great love. That's why he died on the cross. Why he rose from the grave three days, days later to give us access to tear the curtain open. Place us in a family. Forgive us of our sins. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. We're not going to embarrass you or call you down front. We just want to give you an opportunity to, to express on the outside that desire on your inside to be in relationship with your heavenly father through Jesus. So if you want to say yes to a relationship with Jesus, I'm going to count to three in just a second. And when I do, would you just slip your hand up, whatever room you're in, your online family, you too. Come on, let, let me, let's do that. One, two, three. Just slip your hand up right now. Awesome, thank you. You can keep it up just for a second. Keep it up just for every room. I see young people slipping their hand up right now. I see older people, I see people in between, everybody in between. Thank you. Cape Coral. East location, overflow, just slip your hand up. Awesome. I, that's me, Pastor Matt. I want to say yes to a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want that access you're talking about, that free gift. You can put your hands down. So for the sake of all of these who have lifted their hand today, can we, all of us, pray together? And here's what I want to do. I want to just kind of lead us in this. So I'm going to give us a phrase and then I want to invite all of us in every room to, to repeat after me. And if you lifted your hand, I want you to pray this from your heart. God's going to hear you. He's going to come into your life, put his Holy Spirit inside of you like we talked about and change your life forever. Come on, can we pray together? Say, dear Jesus, thanks for loving me and bringing me here to hear this message today. I acknowledge I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. Place me in the family of God. Give me access to you. I begin a relationship with you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to give you more instruction if you said yes in just a moment. But I want to stay in this atmosphere of prayer because I just believe that some of us have come in and you need a touch from God today. So I want to pray for you. Maybe you're discouraged. Maybe you're 
feel broken down. That was the phrase I kept hearing in my heart leading into this weekend. Maybe you're broken. Maybe you feel anxious or discouraged or depressed. Maybe you feel hopeless. I want to pray for you today. So if that's you, maybe just open your hands in front of you. Father, right now, you see your precious ones, your sons and your daughters. Lord, I pray right now that you would pour out your love into every heart like that scripture said that we read a moment ago. God, you see the struggle. You see the, the strain. God, you see the pressure that so many of us have felt like we've been under, God. So many of us, we come in broken today, Lord, and we need a touch from you. So God, would you, in your great grace and mercy, reach down from heaven, walk these aisles, minister to every heart. God, for the hopeless one, I pray that you would restore hope, Lord God. For the one who feels anxious, I pray for your peace right now. God, for the distracted one, I pray that you would make your voice loud and clear in their heart. God, for the one who feels like they're in a valley of decision, like your word calls it, God, I pray for wisdom. I just sense that, that some of us this weekend, we feel like we're on the edge of a decision, like your back's against a wall, and the Lord wants to give you wisdom. Some of you, you've been grieving, and the Lord wants to be your comfort right now. Grieving what was, that dream that you had in your heart that over these last few months hasn't come more into focus and view. It's become less. Like you, you feel like it's getting further away, like it's getting cloudy. Like is it going away? And the Lord wants to restore your hope today. So Jesus, I thank you for your access. I thank you for your presence that we sense now and your power that gives us everything we need for life and godliness. Lord, I bless your people today as we celebrate you, our risen Savior. And all of God's people who agreed said, amen. Come on, everybody, let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs>